Hey everyone, welcome back and happy Thursday, except for PK, who is Dorit's husband, who you guys know with like the 13 different accents. Yeah, I'm not making fun of anybody, but PK is being exposed and this is so awkward, but we're going to talk about it. You better believe we're going to talk about it because they already spoke about it. So we're just referencing. This isn't us exposing you, PK. This is someone else. We're just opening up the conversation. Now, before we do, you guys know how this works. If you have not already, go ahead, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And with that, let's jump right in. It's time for all your binge-worthy pop culture news. Welcome to Up and Adam. All right, guys, so you know David Yanti from Behind the Velvet Rope, right? Well, David does come in with some pretty bomb interviews. Bomb being good, not bomb like he bombed the interview. Please do not run that through the rumor mill. I mean, like, he comes in with some bomb-ass interviews. Like, he gets the tea. And I appreciate that. I can appreciate that. There's room for everyone. Now, he had Rachel Yucatel on. Rachel Yucatel, I actually met in New York City. I've had her on for an interview before as well, and she came to my live show. So Rachel thinks she's great. I'm just going to put that out there. I think she's great. Boom. She's out here, though, giving us some details, giving David some details, who gave us some details about PK. Let's get into this. Oh, Rachel. She really is. She's stunning in this photo, but she's even more stunning in person. Let me tell you. Rachel Yucatel claims that she had a fling with PK. You know, Dorit's husband, who apparently spent over a million dollars on alcohol at her nightclubs. The topic came up after the former nightclub hostess and manager told Behind the Velvet Rope podcast host David Yanti during Wednesday's episode that she doesn't like men who are too handsome. Instead, she goes for the funny husbandy type. Now, Rachel explained that the first time she met PK, the now husband of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Dorit Kimsley, when he was divorcing his first wife, Loretta Gold, with whom he shares three children. Oh, okay. You know what's so funny? Is we've never really touched on that on the show. Like, if you think about the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, not to my knowledge, not something I can remember, talking about maybe they just don't want to be talked about on the show maybe they like their privacy i get it privacy but that could be the reason why i just totally blanked on the fact that he had three children with a former wife all right let's get back look at old pk here way back when now she said that the apparent oh, let's get back into it let's so we don't get lost here in the sauce. The TV correspondent said the London-born property developer turned music manager started as her bottle service customer when she ran nightclubs in Las Vegas and New York City. He would come in with his friends from London and New York and sometimes Dubai, and he would spend some money, and I would help him with his clients. We developed a friendship over a year. She added that PK would always kind of try and date her, but she wasn't interested. According to Rachel, PK soon became her number one bottle service customer and was even the first bottle service customer in Vegas, no joke, to spend $250,000 on bottle service. No one at the time had done that. I mean, I worked at Tao at the time and he spent all this money. It was a big deal in the bottle service industry and nightclubs in general. It was the most money anyone had spent on one table in an evening. I mean, $250,000. Just to give you guys a little bit of like backstory here. I also worked at Tao, but in Los Angeles. And it was called, uh, well, it doesn't matter. I worked in the nightclub and we had, I think like 15 tables. They had somebody at the front who would sell the tables. So say you have 15 tables. The first three tables go for $5,000, $5,000, $5,000. Now, what that means is when you sit at the table, you have a $5,000 minimum. So you're buying that table essentially for $5,000, but that means you just have to spend $5,000 at that table. Not I spend $5,000 to sit at the table and then I'm spending more money. Then after those three tables are gone, okay, we have 12 more. The premium goes up. Then it's $10,000 a table for three more tables. Boom, those are gone. 
and then we have nine more. And then it goes up to 15, 20, 25, sometimes depending on who the talent is or if you have a famous performer, a celebrity hosting that night, it can go up to $50,000 a table. And that's not saying that they're going to stop at 50000 when they are spending the money at these tables. Some people are like 50000 for the table, great. And then they drop like 100 k or obviously 250000 After Rachel learned how to cultivate their working relationship uh, so she could kind of control the room, she said that she earned PK's trust and that he began spending more and more money at her establishments. He was throwing out money on the dance floor and he was buying the whole room bottles. Another time when he came in, he spent... 400000 so that was not the last time he did that. So he became known as one of our biggest spenders. In New York, I brought him to another nightclub one night for my birthday, and he spent $75,000. In our Manhattan club, Marquis, I think he spent $125,000. He spent over a million dollars in my presence on alcohol. But Rachel saw PK as more than just a big spender. I really protected him. I wanted to make sure he was safe. I cared about him as a person, so we developed a completely safe, loving friendship first. So I didn't see him for what he looked like at all. <laughs> like this. I saw him as a person, and then I don't know what happened. I just kind of fell in love with him, and then out of nowhere, I was like, I love this guy. Then I started dating him long distance. Though she didn't reveal when they stopped seeing each other, Rachel said PK ended up filing for bankruptcy somewhat soon after that. Yeah, I mean, a million dollars. This is, I mean, it's just, that's FU money. Asked whether PK was a good kisser, and Rachel replied that she didn't feel comfortable discussing someone else's husband as a kisser, but noted that she loved him and therefore probably thought he was. I don't really remember, quite frankly. He is a wonderful guy. He really is. He's very fun. He's a, you know, exciting guy that when he talks or walks in the room, everything's more exciting because he's around. The intimate stuff is not where he performs the best, but his personality is so engaging and wonderful. I love how she goes, I don't really want to talk about someone else's husband, but the intimate stuff is not where he performs the best. Uh, I think we just talked about the husband's. Awkward. Yeah. Well, he married Dorit in 2015. He had no comment when Page Six reached out. I feel like he's not going to comment on this. And I'm sure Dorit is somewhere like, what the f is Rachel talking about, PK? And Rachel's just like, do you know who I am? I know a lot of people. So again, I'm going to give props and credit where credit is due. Thank you to David Yonti for having Rachel Yucatel come on and share this fabulous story about PK. And I'm just waiting for PK to pop off. Go on, PK. I mean, literally, like if you talk about PK or his family, he has no problem going off in the comment section of Twitter, Instagram, like wherever you're talking about him, he will enter the chat and definitely defend himself. And sometimes he bites right back. I don't think Dorit will comment on this. I think that she'll just be like, why are you talking about this? And she'll probably use one of those, like, you're just trying to be relevant. Is that why you're talking about it? Why now? And Rachel is just like, no, I'm just talking about my life. That's pretty much it. So guys, go ahead and comment below. What are your thoughts? And before you go, don't forget to smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And with that, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Love you.